Hello everyone. Welcome to today's analysis of the Indian Express. Um and we are looking at um the first page here. The first page deals with uh, a few different important things here. The first is uh, the death of of course MS Swaminathan, one of the most important figures in Indian agriculture throughout history. Secondly, uh there's some news regarding uh Mizoram basically refusing to collect biometric data of uh, immigrants illegal immigrants right so this will be interesting to see where it goes another important news is here that uh, there's you might have noticed there are new types of laws coming in with respect to data protection digital india that sort of a thing so here the news says in the new digital bill the government may ban some new tech citing user harm security security here would mean public uh, you know public order and security of the state and that sort of a thing so here what we need to learn is that the digital india bill uh, first though is the imminent successor to the information technology act 2000 right also this is in conjunction with a comprehensive set of laws being put together considering the highly advanced uh, nature of our digital sphere right so the first would be digital uh, personal data protection act which was recently passed you might might have seen it you might have read it if you have not it is highly recommended that you do the indian telecommunications bill is also there it's also coming in and uh, a policy addressing the governance of non personal data because the digital personal data protection act only deals with personal data right so non personal data ke liye bhi ek alag se act ban kar aayega that is what this means here if we go to the second page um in seven second page also there are <clears throat> the conditions given as to why the government could ban certain technologies the they could look into the principal purpose for which it is being developed the nature design and the operation interconnectedness there will also be an authority called the digital india authority which would uh, penalize developers of emerging technologies their deployment violates the proposed principles right we need to keep a track of uh, what is going on in uh, banipur also we will look at it in the sports page now we come to there was world heart day so a lot of coverage on um world heart day now there is a highly uh, there is a high surge in measles cases in delhi and uh, what we need to know about measles is that it is a viral contagious disease right which could lead, lead to encephalitis and swelling of the brain that can lead to death right so this is the actually the season in which diseases like dengue and measles they jump up right because dengue is also uh, spread by mosquitoes living near watery areas and uh, they usually get active around this time of the year when the season starts to change next up uh, we have some more heart related news fair enough um in this news in the communal slurs row thing wherein this bjp mp was uh, is accused of violating the sanctity of the parliament floor <clears throat> there'll be uh, the privileges panel will look into all of these complaints what is the privileges panel here actually the privileges committee is actually the body in the parliament which uh, basically seeks to regulate the parliamentary privilege afforded to all the parliamentarians you ask what parliamentary privilege is it is basically the right to speak anything inside the parliament without any thought for repercussions right because uh, under defamation law also you cannot be charged you, under any criminal law also you cannot be charged for anything said on the floor of the parliament and that is simply because all parliamentarians possess a thing called parliamentary privilege right so there are certain allegations from both sides and the parliamentary privileges committee will look into it the privileges committee is made up of both ruling party mps and opposition mps i hope that is clear now we come to some more news indians make up over 10% of us visa applications right so emigration is at an all time high also india is the uh, biggest recipient of um money from abroad right people people who send their money from abroad to home 
and here's the biggest recipient of that also next up we can look into uh, this particular editorial which talks about ms swaminathan by ashok gulati a very prominent writer and he must be followed at all times ms swaminathan is no more his legacy remains with every student and scientist of agriculture obviously he is uh, famous for bringing the green revolution in india back in the 60s when india was facing back to back droughts this is the times of lal bahadur shastri and indira gandhi right so a lot of our foreign policy used to get hampered because we used to import a lot of uh, food material from abroad especially the us we were a country heavily reliant on both russia and the us to, towards russia because they were a natural ally and supportive of us in re- with respect to arms and ammunition whereas america was supportive of us with respect to food not just supportive i would say um they were the primary exporters of food to us and that is why there was an overt dependence on these countries so the first thing that india sought to do was to attain self uh, self sustenance in agriculture so we saw that a man named norman borlaug is doing a green revolution in mexico right he is using um high yield variety seeds right high yield dwarf variety seeds and uh, basically we indigenize these seeds in india to make sure that our country had a very viable agricultural scenario um there is a reason that the green revolution in india in, uh, was first introduced in the areas of punjab haryana and western uttar pradesh and some areas of south india it is because these were water deficient states where there was a need for irrigation and seeds right irrigation means your artificial pumping of water right and uh, these were water deficient states so they needed the propelling force first so because bihar up west bengal these were all water rich states which were already engaged in the production of rice of paddy if i am to be accurate whereas uh wheat production in india was not very prominent and to ensure that wheat production starts at a high level the first states to be invested in was uh, your punjab haryana western uttar pradesh and some south south indian states right so india experienced a wheat and rice revolution right and once we achieved independence in terms of food um and this is not just seeds in fact let's add in fertilizers also right all this talk about organic farming the all that seeks seeks to do is remove fertilizers you might have heard that the whole talk on fertilizers has died down because sri lanka learned a huge lesson they started to do organic farming they started to neglect the use of fertilizers in their fields and they lost all crops right so of course we need to have an out outlook we need to have an outlook that in the future we'll have a an agricultural scenario wherein we will not need to use fertilizers but totally discarding them today is not an option for any country right and uh, some facts are there in the last 3 years india uh, exported 85 million tons of cereals contributing to global food security cereals here are wheat paddy and uh, those sort of things so ms swaminathan's contribution to ag- indian agriculture are uh, immense immense probably the most important person in india with respect to agriculture right he also headed the indian council on agricultural research he was awarded the f- uh, first world food prize which was set up by norman borlaug who had received the nobel peace prize right because there was no nobel peace prize for agriculture so borlaug won the nobel prize he set up a world food prize which ms swaminathan eventually won right because even in those times india was one of the most populous countries in the world and to sustain food security to initiate food security in a country like india one of the most populous populous countries in the world at that point of time was no easy feat right that's why later he was also awarded the padma shri padma bhushan padma vibhushan there are arguments for giving the bharat ratna also to him but uh, let's see so this is a very heartfelt article by uh, ashok gulati who is also um engaged in agriculture related activities and news right. he also chaired the national commission on farmers which integrated various pressure groups of farmers right into a formal unionized um, sort of collective 
and one of the ncs key recommendations was to have msp so msp ka origin is national commission of farmers which was headed by ms swaminath which is based on the cost of production plus 50 percent return and there are uh, they basically recommended a, a, a particular methodology of calculating the msp which was to include the not only the out of pocket expenses but also family labor imputed rent imputed rent on interest on owned capital right so a comprehensive cost is what ms swaminathan's uh, national commission on farmers recommended but the government met it half matlab uh, went halfway and accepted just 50% return right so accepted half the things they proposed so usse kya hai ki msp wo to nahi mil paya farmers ko jo ki swaminathan aur ye sab chahte the but at least aadha mil gaya utka which was still sufficient because things are going decently well and uh, so uh, some dreams of at least the last paragraph so some dreams of swaminathan remain unfulfilled as with many of us i'm sure the younger generation would conduct more research not just on technologies to raise productivity but but also on the pricing policies to improve farmers profitability the challenge is bigger with climate change and depleting natural resources may swaminathan's inspiration guide us all that is true um there's some other obituaries for uh, uh bhagat singh right a philosophical passage you may read it if you want if you have an interest in this sort of area this uh, is an article which basically parliament to workplace you might have read read about the women's reservation bill about to be passed in the parliament so basically this ensures that increased political representation of women can help loosen supply side constraints to women labor force participation right if you if you have read the periodic labor force survey um our productivity in terms of labor especially uh female labor is extremely low right it's extremely low and uh, that is why we need to ensure political representation first and we are assuming that later on it will catch up in the marketplace also right um it is the plfs is released by uh nso national statistical office right so there are some in this in this article there are some estimates as to what is the labor force per type percentage parliamentarians etc 10.5% in india in the parliament indian women's engagement in the labor force participation is about 25% we have 50% women and only 25% are engaged in the workforce right only 11 countries across the world show lower female labor force participation than india that is a worrying fact so this basically tries to uh create a link between parliament women in parliament and women in the workforce right that one will lead to the other that is what they seek to do and what she's also summarized is that what we know from quotas in panchayats women political leaders may be more amenable to introducing legislation that enforces gender parity in pay and work conditions in the formal sector besides stressing pol- policies that expand work opportunities for women in the manufacturing sector right so this was the summary and uh, needless to say last paragraph if women's political participation in dangers in gender sorry heightened sensitivity and brings a gender perspective to every day decision making by policy makers it has the potential obviously the involvement of women at such a huge scale will have a ground level impact on the policies we see right they will be more sensitive um this is uh, with respect to that a few more news with respect to states not much of our concern some sports is also there keep a track on the asian games and india's medal tally here is uh, 25 today 6 gold 8 silver and 11 bronze remember the names of the people who won the gold 10 meter air pistol men's team sarabjot singh arjun singh chima and shiva narwal they won gold in 10 meter rifles <coughs> um the n- the news in international scenario which we need to look at is uh, that north korea has adopted a constitutional amendment to enshrine its policy on nuclear force as if that was needed even further and they are accelerating production of nuclear weapons to deter 
what they call as U.S. provocations, right? North Korea keeps doing that. Okay. Um, places in conflict in news, which is Republic of Nagorno Karabakh, will cease to exist. They will surrender to Azerbaijan, whose capital is Baku, right? And uh, ethnic Armenians said that they were dissolving the breakaway statelet that they had defended for more than three decades, when more than half the population, approximately sixty percent, crossed into Azerbaijan, right? And the Republic of Artsakh, please remember this name, Artsakh, will cease to exist by uh, January first, right? So Azerbaijan is happy that the area that they wanted is strategically there, and uh, Armenians here are uh, ceding over to Azerbaijan, and I hope that this brings peace in the area, which has been engulfed in constant violence since decades. So. and uh, canada has been in news and canadian the canadian prime minister has uh, apologized because the speaker of the house of commons the lower house there invited a nazi veteran in the chamber right so it's quite funny the actor who played dumbledore in harry potter has died condolences maldives election ka kya impact hoga india pe that we need to understand right and uh, they have a is similar to France's right and in a, a proportional representation system 50% of votes aapko milne hi chahiye right so basically what we need to understand is that uh, soli is in our favor right and uh, the others are with china and maldives is also an important strategic body because it is present in the indian ocean and it forms part of xi jinping's belt and road initiative so it is important to keep an eye right and we need soli to win because new delhi ke liye hamare liye wahi acha hai and that is why we have provided them vaccines we have assisted them in tsunami tsunamis we have been engaged in water sanitation projects right trade was approximately 50 crores so considering the small country whose capital is male right maldives maldives capital is male and uh, it's proximity to the west coast of india and running through the indian ocean it's a, they have a strategic uh, importance obviously and they are playing towards with that also considering that they are keeping china also in the loop india also in the loop so remains to be seen how this time how this pans out but uh, we basically need soli to win the election for me of for maldives to be strategically in our control at least in a in a manner of speak um not much to see after this uh, apart from the fact that uh, there's 20% 28% gst on e gaming all your dream 11s and one x belt and that sort of a thing sab pe 28% gst lagega so there might be some issue with respect to how the market will get affected in this area but the gst council has held this and uh, let's see what happens right um and the board which approved the amendments was the central board of indirect taxes and customs cbic keep that in mind also that is all for today thank you